Hello and welcome to Rhino's Orioles Report. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. <sighs> kind of a strange scheduling for the Red Sox versus Orioles series at Camden Yards. A 1 o'clock game to start Monday and then two six thirty five games, as I mentioned before. Really weird. Like I almost got used to the two night games and then a day game. Now it's a day game and then two night games. You're driving me nuts. I guess I got too much OCD in me. The Orioles are able to take two of those three games for another series win. Disappointing that they couldn't sweep Boston. It would have been nice to, you know, get on a seven-game win streak after you finally get your, you know, sweepless record snapped, which is disappointing, but... Talk about game two in a minute here. As you see, I'm on MassInSports.com. Here is game one. Monday's game at Camden Yards. Boston Red Sox 3, Baltimore Orioles 11. Yeah. Hmm. You scoring off runs there, boys? <laughs> Henderson. No hits. Wow, oh, you got 11 runs. Henderson didn't hit, get a hit, get one hit. Wow. Well, he did walk once and score once. <laughs> okay. Arias actually comes in later in the game. Game's kind of out of reach for the Red Sox. Get Henderson off his feet. Get Urias a few innings in the field and, and a bat at least. Makes sense. Though you didn't do the same thing for Rutschman, which was odd, but okay. Rutschman, one hit, two RBIs, scored once. Oh, and Arias actually got a hit in his lone at-bat. Glossing over that fact there. O'Hearn, two hits and a run scored. Mountcastle, three hits, an RBI, two runs scored. Kowser, a hit, two runs scored. Westberg, a hit, an RBI, a run scored, and walked once. Stowers. Three hits, four RBIs. Wow. How about that? Also scored once. I would love to see Stowers get more playing time. I really would. I feel like he's been hitting rather well. I think part of it is keeping the other teams, what do you want to call it, analytics and scouting, book writers, off balance by having more than one guy that you can slot in over here. It's part of it. Get Hayes some downtime. Get him to work on some stuff. If you get Mullen some downtime, get Kowser more experience in center field or left field. Well, it's kind of tricky, tricky configuration out there. I hope it continues. Mullen's a hit, two RBI scored once. Mateo a hit, an RBI. Scored once. Let's see. Two RBIs for Mullins or one? He drove in two. Let's retouch on that. Make sure I don't sound like too much like an idiot. Stowers, two doubles. Mountcastle, Mateo, Rutschman, Westberg also with doubles. Wow. Lots of extra base hits. Mullins with a triple. No home runs. Okay. 11 runs. No home runs. Well. That's how you got to do it sometimes, I guess. Kind of odd. The Orioles scored that many runs in Homer one time. Cole Irvin gets a start in this game. Five full innings pitched. Gives up four, four hits, no runs, walks three, strikes out six. Well, you love the no runs part. Probably could have done without four hits and three walks. It's a little high, but <sighs> can't really complain about that. I mean, it sounds like I'm complaining about that, but you really can't complain that much about it. You, We'll get to the part where we're complaining about something here in a second. Mr. Webb, like every day Jacob Webb almost, comes in and throws two complete innings. How many pitches did it take him? 23 pitches. That's relatively quickly nowadays. 
Gives up one hit, no runs, no walks, strikes out two. New guy. Let's go and try to see how badly I butcher his name. Not that I'm trying to. Thiago Vieira. I'm thinking is the correct way to say that. Claimed off waivers very recently. Let's go, internet. Load the thing back up. Did not have a good first impression with the Orioles. Not at all. Doesn't even record an out. But he does allow one hit, three runs, all of them earned, and four walks. Four. Maybe there was a reason this guy was let go. I guess we'll have to see. Maybe the nerves were up because he just got cut loose from one team and now a playoff contender is claiming him and tossing him right in there. Maybe. There's 26 pitches, only nine strikes. It's not good. That's not. <sighs> Not sure what they saw in this guy, but I mean, again, we'll see what the next time, see what happens next time, if there is a next time. Mr. Perez comes in to make sure the Red Sox don't mount a comeback. It's full inning pitch of the eighth inning here. No hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Well, there you go. Mr. Tate. Blowout game, so no need to waste Coulomb, Cano, or Kimbrel, which is fantastic. So, Mr. Tate comes in, get pitches the ninth inning, doesn't give up two hits, eh, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. But again, no runs. There you go. Did it in 16 pitches, too. How about that? Now, here comes the, you know, bad game. See, Boston got two runs in the first two innings. <clears throat> All right, well, let me actually start off the way I should be starting off. It's game two, Tuesday's game, Boston Red Sox eight, Baltimore Orioles three. You see, the Red Sox got two runs in the first, and the Orioles were able to get three runs in their first. Take the lead back, and then Mr. Starting Pitcher decides to give the lead right back. Cool. What then slams the door shut, you know, and until the eighth and ninth inning where you give Boston four more runs. <sighs> Whatever, y'all. Henderson, one hit, one run scored. Rutschman, one hit, also walked once. Wow. Ten plate appearances by your one and two man, and you get two hits and a walk. Not, I mean, yeah. I mean, technically that goes in with the statistics of baseball, you know, because that would be three for ten. But first and second place hitters, not going to win too many games if they keep doing things like this. Just not. You know, I mean, the bottom of the lineup can carry you for a game or two, but not most games. O'Hearn, a hit, a run scored, and a walk. Kowser, a hit, an RBI, and a run scored. Santander, a hit. Westberg, two hits, two RBIs. Also got hit in the wrist. Got an article about that. Stowers, one hit. Only got two at-bats. This was, I was at this game, and this was the situation, and I yes, I know, everybody's like, oh, you're in hindsight and all that, and yes, that is true, but I I was kind of yelling about this, you know, sit for my seats, as I usually do, especially when they're not playing well, and I'm there spending all my money for a loss. I get kind of annoyed. 
So, no, I'm not the greatest fan to have in, in your stadium. What, what was it? Santander gets a hit, and then Westberg gets hit. You got a first and a second. And then here's Brandon Hyde to, you know, start pushing buttons, as they like to say, on the broadcast. Oh, Brandon Hyde pushing all the right buttons. Well, he was, Brandon Hyde was pushing all the wrong buttons today. I guess that's debatable because you can say, oh, we put Mountcastle in there and Mountcastle walked to load the bases. Okay, well, nothing good happened after that. So, uh, <laughs> then it, it, who cares what button you push? And it wasn't the right one because no runs came out of it. Maybe it's because Mullins' turn comes up, and I understand Mullins ain't got a hit, but Austin Hayes? Mullins gets a start, and I know he's not. Let's see, he's not hot at the plate, but he has been in the game, and he's warmed up, and he's loose. I don't see Austin Hayes as a better choice there, and especially since he struck out, which I, I didn't expect Austin Hayes to do much. I would have rather Mullins be in there. Honestly, I'd have rather Mullins bunt. And yes, I know, because Santander's on third base. And it didn't work out that well the last time. But at the same time, Mullins is probably a little better at bunting for a base hit. And Santander's knee is better. And to a certain extent, when his knee was bad, I think he was safe. So... What would be the worst possible scenario there? Mullins, Bunts, Santander out at the plate. Because you're not going to be able to... I guess it's technically possible, depending on where the bunt lands, that you could throw Mullins out at first after getting the out at home plate. But it's tough because Mullins is fast. And from that batter's box on the right side... On first base side, the left-handed batter's box. He's getting a little bit better jump than, let's say, a right-handed hitter. I, I like those odds better. Plus, what it does... I don't know if Brandon Hyde saw this because the way he manages, this was like... He set up the team to fail by Brandon Hyde's thinking. You know how Brandon Hyde likes to... Play the lefty-righty matchup. And he usually doesn't have a run of all right-handed hitters. Well, But he ended up doing this because Westberg right-handed, Mountcastle right-handed, Hayes right-handed, Mateo right-handed. Yeah, I... I need to say, you know, Mateo didn't do anything. He did have a ground ball to the infield. They threw home. We're not able to keep, to get Mateo out at first. They did get they did cut the run off the plate. So strike out, ground out, and then Henderson. Nothing. Disappointing. And one thing I also didn't like. You see here, Stowers was in there. At DH, it's almost like Brandon Hyde was planning on pinch hitting Ryan Mountcastle for Kyle Stowers at some point. I would have liked him to move the other players around if he was planning on doing it. Otherwise, and yeah, he had to be planning on doing it because otherwise, why is a why is Santander not to DH and Stowers out in right field? Because you plan to use Mountcastle at some point to pinch in for Stowers. There's no other reason to put Santander in right field and not Stowers. Because Santander definitely needs a break. But you didn't do that. We could, obviously. I mean, you still could have done it. Because then you have Mountcastle at DH. Or I guess, no, you would have Mountcastle in right field. Well, you could have just swapped O'Hearn and Mountcastle. I don't know that... Yes, I do think Santander is a better outfielder than 
Ryan O'Hearn, but it's not much of a drop off versus what you're gaining. I mean, I, I would have rather Stowers stay out there and play right field. I want to see what the kid can do. I do. Okay, you're losing. Oh, well, it is a marathon, not a sprint, and you are only as strong as your weakest link. If you don't give the Stowers the experience, you don't put him in the moment, see if he even can do it, or, you know, give him the knowledge of what it feels like to be in a moment like that, He'll, he's not going to grow enough. I don't, it's like what 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 was this? What was that? <sighs> of course, I'm disappointed that Stowers just doesn't get the playing time. It's very annoying. Only one extra base hit tonight, and it was Henderson. And they were Orioles were doomed in this one because you see here Adley Rutch Adley Rutschman throwing error. Yeah, they def the Orioles definitely gave the Boston Red Sox extra bases this series. Still able to get, you know, the win in the series, but a lot more errors than we're used to seeing. It's not good, but hopefully get it all out of your system now. Rodriguez got to start in this game. Yeah. Rodriguez has a habit of doing that, not being able to start the game that well. It's like he doesn't, I don't know, does he not warm up enough before a game or something? Like he doesn't have the feel for all his pitches early enough in the game. Or he doesn't know what to do when he doesn't have the feel for all his pitches. But he does, more often than not, he writes himself. And he's able to get through, a lot of times, six innings. And he was able to do that Tuesday night. Six innings pitched, doesn't give up seven hits. Eh. Four runs, all of them earned. Eh. Only walks one batter, which is great. May have been part of the problem. Not enough strike the ball pitches. Possible. Ten strikeouts. All right, man. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> How can you not win games like this when your starting pitcher gives you ten strikeouts in the first six innings? How do you not win that ball game? How do you not win that ball game? Okay. Perez comes on in relief of Rodriguez, throws one complete inning, uh, the seventh inning. One hit, one run. Earned run, too. No walks, no strikeouts. Again, another run. Yay. Cano gets the eighth inning. It's the full eighth inning. Does give up a hit, but no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Finally, a pitcher that doesn't give up any runs. Oh, and then here comes Keegan Aiken in the ninth inning. That stopped that streak. And essentially put the game out of reach. Keegan Aiken in the ninth inning gives up two hits, three runs. Wait, hold on. How do you give up three runs on two hits? He walked one. Wait, you walked one batter and you gave up two hits and they all scored? Wow. He's doing so well there for a while. He was. He was doing so well. Now, I, was, I mean, that's. That's a pretty bad performance. Does strike one batter out, though. Cool. Consolation prize, I guess. Come to game three. Wednesday's game from Camden Yards. Again, well, obviously we haven't changed the location. We're in the same series. Boston Red Sox, one. Baltimore Orioles, six. Henderson finally got, <laughs> got got a hit in this one. A big hit. 
Probably the most run producing hit that you can get. Yeah. Grand slam. One hit, grand slam, four RBIs with the run scored. Two strikeouts. Yeah. Seems like the strikeouts are up a tick. Mountcastle batting second this time around. Ooh, how about that? Ryan Mountcastle. Two hits. That's it. O'Hearn. Ofer. Kowser. Ofer, technically, but fielder's choice and all that, he was able to get a run scored. Was it an error? No, the Orioles made two errors. Red Sox didn't make that many errors. The Orioles actually out-errored the Red Sox in this series. Santander hitting a run scored. Mullins over. Mateo over, though he did walk once. Arias. Two hits, two RBIs, two runs scored. Hmm. Okay. Not getting that much playing time, mostly because Jordan Westberg is, you know, he's soaking up all that other, you know, other playing time from another infielder that isn't named Gunnar Henderson or Ryan Malcastle. But with the hand, getting hit in the hand for um, Westberg, obviously the right thing was to do, right thing to do was to give him a day off the next day. Can, starting at catcher, yes. A game without Adley Rutschman, yay, good job. Good job, Brandon Hyde. Way to get Adley Rutschman two days off in a row. Because Thursday, the off day, this was Wednesday's game. All right, fantastic. Thank you for listening to me. Can over technically, but he did work a walk. And scored once. Arias Henderson with home runs. Yeah. Arias with the solo home run attack on another run late. Caught stealing Mateo. Trying to double steal. So this is Mateo trying to steal third. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's because I don't like the Red Sox. I don't like their fans. I think they're loud, mouthy, racist. I don't like them. And I'm not sure I really like the way their ball club plays. They seem to get so angry at Baltimore because we injured Pedroia all them years ago. But it's like at the same time, your damn fat Kung Fu Panda guy rolls up on scope, breaks his ankle, and he's out for months too. It was like, you do the same shit, man. That's okay. Um, it wasn't a great throw to third base, but Devers over there, like, hooking the arm of Mateo, like, actually, in my opinion, grabbing the arm. More hooks it in there under it. You know, it was his glove hand. and hooks it in under Mateo's arm. And, like, doesn't not only doesn't allow him to really use his arm to try to touch the base, then he's also falling and leaning all over him, in my opinion, pulling Mateo off the bag. Because Mateo got his right hand on the bag. But, you know, with all the contact with Devers... Because they said he came off the bag, and that's why I was out. I'm like, well, with all the contact, I mean, are you really allowed to do that? The runner's in there with his hand, and then you're allowed to just go in and, and grab and pull and hook him off the base? Is that, are you allowed to do that? I didn't think you were allowed to do that, but you know what? We should try doing that more, because obviously the umpires allowed the Boston Red Sox to do it. Henderson fielding error, Kowser throwing error. Yay. Corbin Burns gets a start in this one. This is how an ace goes out there and puts in some work. Seven innings pits. Did throw 108 pitches, which I think is a little much for my liking, but hopefully he can handle it. Seven full innings of work here. Only gives up three hits. Gives up one run, an unearned run. Walks three. But you don't really like three walks, but in seven innings and he didn't allow the hits. Eh, okay, I think we'll, we'll take it. You know, five strikeouts. Go with that. 
it's a great performance. That's, you know, I mean, that's ace. It's an ace performance right there. And that's why, you know, you traded DL Hall and Joey Ortiz for this guy. Pretty sure he's a free agent at the end of the year, too. So kind of a high price to pay. But so far, I think we've gotten our money's worth, which is it's good because you didn't get your money's worth out of Jack Flaherty last year. Danny Coulomb. Oh, my God. We finally see the one of the big three. Or we saw Cano. But, oh, my God. Coulomb now. One game in this whole series. Cano, one game in this whole series. <laughs> Kimbrough didn't pitch at all. How often does that happen in a series the Orioles win? It doesn't happen. But, you know what? It's about time it did. Coulomb pitches the eighth inning. Does give up a hit. But no runs, no walks. Strikes out one. Mr. Tate in here to finish the game. Ninth inning. Does give up two hits. Not great. But no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. They didn't even turn a double play, which is disappointing. But you get through it. And you didn't have to pitch Kimbrell and Kulam and Cano only through one inning. We'll see how the long layoff because I'm trying to remember did Kimberly pitch the last game of the St. Louis series oh no wait who did they no the White Sox White Sox did he pitch the last game of the White Sox series I can't remember I don't think he pitched the last game no, honestly I can't remember but didn't pitch Monday, didn't pitch Tuesday, didn't pitch Wednesday, didn't pitch Thursday. Well, tonight because off day. So, probably going to, regardless of the score, we're probably going to see Craig Kimball Friday night. You're almost going to have to at that point. I mean, it's almost too much of a long, too long of a layoff, I think. But, I mean, it is nice to not have to pitch him, you know? All right, let's get to some of these articles, get some of these injury updates. This article written by Rock Kubatko. This was yesterday. Because today's Thursday. Before Thursday's game, giving an update on Westberg. Talking to Brandon Hyde about it. And Brandon Hyde saying, it looks like we caught a break. Because it doesn't appear that there's any structural damage to Westberg's hand. It doesn't look like it's going to Costs us an injury list trip. So let's keep our fingers crossed, you know. More injury updates. This article written also by Rock Kubatko updating Kramer, Wells, and Means. Technically, there is no update on Wells and Means, you know. Wells is still throwing. He's doing his... Um, Playing catch routine, not progressing that fast with that. Means is still getting his second opinion. So in this case, no news kind of sounds like bad news. But with Kramer and his tricep, was it a, they've called a strain, a tricep something, strain, discomfort, inflammation, Something soreness. The the pain is going down, or the soreness, or the, you know, it's going down, and he's going to be. What's not even I'm not even saying a rehab assignment. We don't even know because of the way starters are. They only pitch once every five days, so you know if they go on the injury list for two weeks. They really need a rehab assignment. Not always. I mean, we saw it with Rodriguez. He didn't need a rehab assignment. But Kramer is starting to come back and start using his arm again, throwing the brown ball, playing catch, whatnot. It's not on a mound yet, as far as I'm being told, anyway. But everything looks to be progressing okay with that. So hopefully not too much longer without Kramer. So all right, so let's get to the schedule. 
yeah, it's going to be a tough June, but it's heavy with American League East matchups. You can see the next series. Finally, we get to see the Tampa Bay Rays. We haven't seen them yet this season, which is slightly odd. We played two series with the Red Sox before we even got one with the Rays. Weird schedule. Weird. Oh, well. Rays are coming into Camden Yards Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday game scheduled for 7.05. Saturday's game scheduled for 4.05. Sunday's game scheduled for 1.35. And then the, the Orioles will be going to Toronto for a four-game series. So no off day Monday. Okay, so this is going to do it for this edition of Rhino's Orioles Report. Stay tuned for... Monday, and I will talk about the series between the Tampa Bay Rays and the Baltimore Orioles. Hey, I said right. I said Tampa Bay Rays and not Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Good for me. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I am the Angry Rhino, and this is Birdland.